Some of you uh, recently read the, the book Screwtape Letters with, with me, and uh, in it, C.S. Lewis writes of these two imaginary characters, one of them Screwtape, an experienced senior level managerial uh, devil who is entrusted to guide an entry level devil, a devil by the name of Wormwood. And Wormwood is the inexperienced devil who is then sent out in the field to tempt people people individually. He's, he's in the trenches in the war between heaven and hell. And as uh, this unfolds, it's an amazing little read because these letters of advice from the senior tempter to the junior, they hit on how are we tempted? What's the best way to tempt people? At one point, the person that Wormwood has been sent to tempt becomes romantically involved with a good Christian family. And Screwtape gets very anxious and angry over this because what happens is, is the, the person who Wormwood is trying to tempt is spending a lot of time in the house full of Christians. And there are two things in that house that this devil just cannot stand. The two things that are anathema to a devil. The two things that just drive a devil to distraction. And those two things are silence and music. Silence and music. It was an, it's an interesting thing the first time you read those two, music and silence, these two things. It, screw tape, the senior devil, the senior tempter, talks about how much more he enjoys noise. He loves noise. That hell is just full of noise. We just heard how heaven is full of singing, all people singing together, but hell is full of noise. The never-ending constant thrum of noise. And it's an interesting thing to put these together. Music, silence, and noise. Music is about the most amazing thing we experience, right? It is the creating and sharing in what is beautiful. It can transform a person. It can transport you to somewhere else, to another time. It can take sorrow and, and make it into comfort. It can take love. I mean, you say, I love you, and okay, good. You sing, I love you, and there's guts to that, that right? That love songs. There, there's always more love songs to be written. Why? Because music can take love and make it powerful and give guts to it, which is probably not the most romantic way to put it, but you get the point. Right? Music can take joy and say, you say I'm happy, that's great. You sing I'm happy and, and you turn the music up way too, I mean that, that's, music is powerful. And, and, and music is inherently communal. You can't sing harmony with yourself. It, it doesn't work, right? You can try, don't, you're not going to get very far. And so music builds community. And, and even when you're listening alone, you're not alone because you're listening with all the other people who have listened to that over time and with whom you have enjoyed that music before. And, and so music is an anticipation of heaven. It, it really is. I think music, it, it, when we are creating music, we are joining with God in the very act of creation. It, it comes out of the essence of what is the most beautiful about us. We are becoming co-creators with God of what is the finest. That, that's what music is, right? And, and that, the other extreme, there, there is silence. To try to find words to talk about silence is somewhat paradoxical, really. How do you talk about absence? But Whereas with music, music is communal, silence is individual. Because when you're not talking, who are you sitting there with? Yourself. It's just you and you. And we don't get a lot of time, just you and you, right? I just sit there with yourself. And, and, and to be in silence is to be in a place where we can begin to hear ourselves and maybe even hear the small voice of God, the still small voice of God. In, in, in silence, we start to find things that are beautiful and frustrating and ugly in, in ourselves. And, and it's like taking a, looking inside, looking at a crystal and turning it so you can see the facets. You, you see things that you usually just don't think about ourselves, right? And, and so in the silence, we notice the small things that are not so small. And, and in the silence, we can hear more than ever before because... How often are we, when someone else is talking, we're not listening, we're just plotting what we're going to say next. And, and to say, I'm, I'm being silent now, is just to be committed to hear yourself, to hear others, to hear God. 
And so music and silence. Music is the creation of what is beautiful. Silence is the time to, to be self-reflective and to hear. And both of them are anathema to noise. Because what's noise? Noise is neither beautiful nor is it edifying. It doesn't create something wonderful. It doesn't teach us about ourselves. Noise does not make us more honest, more holy, more beautiful. Noise, it fills up our time with a semblance of work, the impression of importance, a simulacrum of value. But noise doesn't actually do anything, does it? It just fills up our time. That is why hell is full of noise. It's full of something that seems like it's worth something, but is actually a lie. Noise, it's just nothing. It's a wasted opportunity to have done something beautiful in music or silence in hearing. It, it, noise is a wasted opportunity, and devils love it, is what we read. And so I would ask as you go into this Lenten season that you think about those three things, music and silence and noise. And uh, take one of these and pass them around. I want you to go home and, and contemplate these questions. Because to think about music and silence as no and noise can be somewhat challenging, right? Because what is music and beautiful for some is sometimes not... When I ask you how someone's doing, if I ask out of a deep sense of, of of wanting concern for what that person, how that person is, that's the music of community, right? When I ask you how someone is so that I can sort of be titillated by someone else's bad fortune, that, that's not the music of community, that, that's noise, right? And, and so to ask what is music and what is silence and what is noise in your life takes some, well, it, it takes some silence, doesn't it? You gotta sit down and listen to yourself. But I, I'd ask, I'd invite you to take some time to sp be more musical in the next 40 days, to spend more time in silence, and to rid yourself of noise. Whether that noise be the never-ending 24-hour news, the never-ending emails, the constant phone calls, the gossip, the TV, whatever it is that causes you to think, what just happened to that hour or day or afternoon, whatever, that's noise. This Lent, more music, more silence, less noise.